Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to today's Rediscover China in the UK. Today we will focus on a journey to Xuefeng Mountains, a window into the unseen China. The event is organized by CNTO London and Make It China with the support from the cultural section of the Chinese Embassy in London. My name is Xie Ling. I'm from China National Tourist Office, London. Before the talk, a few words about why we are here today and a brief introduction to our speakers. In June 2019, CNTO London and the Cultural Office of the Chinese Embassy in London organized a symposium at the British Museum about culture and tourism. Specialists from both the UK and China shared their ideas and expertise on how historical, cultural, and technological factors could affect, uh, could help promote tourism with quality and sustainability. Dennis was invited as the event moderator shortly after I met him during, you know, a Hunan promotional event in London in March. Uh, in November the same year during World Travel Market, CNTO London presented the concept of wider China, which showcases China's less known places with diverse cultures, folk customs, multi-ethnic integration, and intangible cultural heritage beyond China's well-known cities. Lyon was introduced to me at the China Pavilion, and I was very much impressed by his Trails China stories. In November 2020, during the online world travel market, CNTO London presented intangible cultural heritage tourism routes and case studies in poverty alleviation through tourism. Again, via the concept of wider China, which refers to less traveled places in China. So today's Rediscover China in the UK is in fact a continuation and development in line with the above mentioned efforts. Now, about the speakers. Leon is a writer, broadcaster, and trail development consultant from Northern Ireland. He has traveled over 50,000 miles by human power and has been involved in trail development throughout Asia. In 2018, Leon joined Trails China to develop trails in China. With designer David Landis, he co-created the Xuefeng Mountain Trail in 2019. Dennis is the CEO and co-founder of Make It China. He worked in international trade for many years, specializing in marketing, Chinese manufacturing and distribution. He's also an outdoor enthusiast. Now, highlight, the highlight before the talk, yeah, invitation to you all by Mr. Chen Xianchun, Deputy Secretary General of Hunan Provincial Government. Okay, the invitation reads like this. Dear friends, Hunan's Xuefeng Mountain Trail is designed with the aim of welcoming travelers from all walks of life, from the international and the domestic Chinese market who enjoy hiking. Projects such as these help to breathe new life into remote areas bring not only cultural exchange, but also contributing to poverty elevation and rural revitalization. Today, Leo and Dennis from the Trails Design Team will share with their experiences, which I hope you will find as enjoyable and exciting as the trail itself. In addition to trail design, Huna has open arms to welcome development and cooperation from related industries and equipment suppliers worldwide. Once this pandemic ceases, look forward to the time when you may enjoy the trail. Huna welcomes you all. Okay, Huna welcomes you. Now let's jump to the talk, I can't wait. And Dennis will also chair the Q&A afterwards. Now please, Leon and Dennis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, to start, let me actually share my screen first, and then I will make this. 
Okay, cool. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the wonderful uh, introduction of you know us, and uh, definitely you know uh, on behalf of the team, you know I would like to say thank you so much, uh, you know, for the cultural office of the you know, embassy in the UK and also CNTO London as well, for this great opportunity uh, for us, you know, today with Leon and myself to share with you all not only uh, a story about you know Xuefeng Mountain Trail, a window to an unseen China. But also a partnership and also a friendship, as you you know you could see that. So today, you know, you have me. Uh, you know, Dennis here. I'd like to say hi first. You want to say hi to? Yeah, it's a real pleasure to be here, and I'm excited to share these stories with you. So thank you for having us. Great. So now, um, as Mr. Xue suggested, now let's get this journey begin. Um, so to okay, now give me a second. So first of all, uh, Mr. Xu already gave a brief introduction about myself. I think this is the time for me to share a little bit more uh, about you know, myself with you all. So yes, as Mr. Xu mentioned, you know, I have actually you know, a strong background of manufacturing sector, especially you know, in, the manuf you know, in the marketing sector. So right now we are leading the team uh, based in Bristol for the marketing sectors to help uh, more and more Chinese companies to develop actually their overseas market. But in the meantime, we also have a very strong sector, which is in the cultural and the tourism sector, that our aim is to help a lot more cultural and uh, tourism destinations uh, to develop you know, their market. So as you could see that from my uh, sort of like a brief CV out there, uh, I'm always in the outdoor uh, industry. Uh, I have a, you know, my previous experience in the bicycle trade. So apart from, you know, I'm an outdoor enthusiast, I actually have a very itchy feet. So the itchy feet will just, you know, push me to think that, you know, what else actually we could do for the cultural and the tourism sector. Uh, after working a number of years in the cultural tourism sectors, I always find that the, the uh, outdoor products actually, you know, in China has actually has a huge potential. Uh, because there are a lot more overseas, you know, products uh, requests in curries actually from the Chinese market. So then uh, with this help of Leon, of course, and the whole team, we developed the idea of Trails China. So Trails China, you know, was set up with the aim really to open a door for more and more global friends to see the rural sites of China. As Mr. Xue mentioned, uh, when we had the WTM, which is World Travel Market, back to 2019, we had this idea called Wider China. So Wider China means there are a lot of places that not only about those big cities that, you know, the globe has heard of, or even, you know, I know, but there are a lot of, you know, you know hidden treasures that yet to be developed. So Trails China has this aim to connect those passes ancient passes, stories, cultural rich stories, to get them together and then to be able to create a nice story with a trail to show off, you know, the treasure of that particular maybe village or, you know, that certain places. So that's actually, you know, myself and, uh, you know, Trails China. I think this is time for me to now start to share the story of the friendship and partnership. As you could see this picture, I think it's very easy for you to spot me, uh, at, you know, as the only, you know, Chinese a younger person, version of a younger version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I don't know whether how many of you guys actually can spot Leon from this picture. So I have like two seconds for you guys actually to figure it out and then you can check Leon right now. Maybe some of you guys already, you know, figured out that from the, from the picture, right, from the picture, my left side, that's Leon. So now this is the time to um, share the story. I hope it's not gonna be too cheesy for you, uh, Leon. So back to 2012, um, my wife, as you can see the, uh, you know, Willow, the blonde lady, you know, in the picture as well, we were, you know, working in Shenzhen. That was a very hot May. Uh, Willow and I were invited to attend that, you know, an event. And the events, actually, everyone you could see from the outfit we were dressing, you know, quite formal uh, or smart, at least. And then there's two, you know, I may say 
unusual creatures that just appeared. <laughs> And then I was thinking, well, this is just uh, not right. I mean, how could people just don't shave and then appear, you know, to these kind of, you know, uh, meetings? Like today, if I all just appeared like like that, you probably all of you guys would think the same. So that kind of like curiosity really drove me, you know, gave, gave me the gut to say, well, if I must have speak to these two gentlemen. Then I happened to talk to Leon. I said, what, why you guys were here? And then Leon started to say, oh. Yeah, we, we, we just, you know, here we were invited by the organizer and then we just uh, walked, uh, you know, from Mongolia. And I said, wait a second, what, what do you mean by you walked from Mongolia? And then <laughs> that's, of course, as you could see, then Leon explained the whole stories to me. And then that's actually how our friendship, you know, started since then. And then later, I think, you know, it's the time uh, for you to introduce yourself a bit more. And then I think along the story, you will find more about why Leon was there and how we met. So Leon? Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly just jealous that you haven't changed at all. You look exactly the same <laughs> as you did 10 years ago. Uh, yes, that was in the midst of a very long expedition for me. And thank you for that kind introduction, Dennis. You always give me a, a wonderful setup. Uh, I ended up there in the midst of a long journey on foot, which is more or less what I've done um, a number of times over the last 10 or 12 years. So I've made a career out of telling stories, I suppose is the best way to do it. I, I like to write books, uh, make films, make productions for radio, give lectures, any way possible to share stories of places that I think are fascinating, but perhaps don't get heard about all that often. And I, I like to travel slowly, immersively in a way that's allows me to connect with the places that I'm going through. And I find that walking is one of the best ways to do that. I've also traveled a lot by bicycle and by kayak and, um, and it's taken me all over the world. It's been the most wonderful uh, way to experience many different parts of the planet and also a really rewarding and, and, and worthwhile way to spend my time to, to try and understand people, place, culture, and, and then put that into a medium that I can share it with others so that they might understand it too. And one of the most wonderful, demanding, challenging, exciting, awe-inspiring journeys that I've been fortunate enough to go on was this journey through China. When in 2011, with my colleague and friend, Rob Lilwall, we walked from Mongolia to Hong Kong, which was a distance of about 3,000 miles, 5,000 kilometers. And we set off... Uh, in the midst of winter and and headed south. Um, and so you, I'll just share briefly a, a couple of um, pictures of, of that journey. But we, we started in, in the middle of the Gobi Desert in a place where we could turn around 360 degrees and see absolutely nothing but just the emptiness around us. We walked through the winter when the snow blizzards came in, rolled in from Siberia. Uh, and then we walked down through northern China into central China along the sections of the Great Wall, which were very remote um, sections of the wall that were 500 years old, which I think very few people are, are privileged enough to see. We certainly felt very lucky to spend the nights in our tents underneath these parts of ancient history. And then finally down into southern China, into these very different types of landscapes from the the, the cold of the north down to the heat and humidity of the south, the wonderful karst landscapes of, of Guilin. Um, and then finally down through Shenzhen, where, where I briefly met Dennis and looked so bedraggled in the picture that he kindly shared. And, <laughs> you have more pictures. And, uh, and, and finally, uh, looking equally bedraggled, I suppose, down to <clears throat> Hong Kong, where we arrived uh, to the end and, and Rob arrived home. And we... It was a wonderful experience, a wonderful personal experience. And as I reflected on it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, afterwards, it, it took us seven months and we saw so much. We just got such a sense of the, the vast scale of China, the, the diversity, the, the diversity in everything, in, in landscapes and people and accents and in, in, in climate. Um, but it also felt to us that as these two foreigners walking through, although we sometimes had local companions with us, even walking over this amount of distance was, was too fast and too far. And, and we missed so much. And actually, you know, you'll see from the pictures that I shared, it's of these big landscapes, but, but the, the moments that remained with me the longest were the more 
intimate moments, the moments where we were invited into people's homes and we had a brief glimpse of something unique, some insight into the culture, not just of that province or, or that city, but of that village and of that family. And that's the stuff that I think really impacts you as, as a traveler. And, I, and you know, I, I hope also can be a cultural exchange. We could share something that we had too. So as my career has progressed and as I've walked on lots of trails all over the world, um, I've moved slowly from being a, an enthusiast and observer of trails to beginning to work on them myself because I, I believe very keenly in the, the power of trails. And, and after this experience in China, one of the things I wanted to do was to see if I could condense what Rob and I struggled through for seven months and 3,000 miles and, and bring it down and put it together into something very small and much more manageable and much more concise and impactful that would mean others could have a similar type of cultural insight as we could, plus all of the other benefits of trails. Yeah. So, so let me tell you a little bit about trails because we hear this word a lot. And you know, I think many of us, uh, many, many of you listening may go out walking a lot. You may um, have been on some of the great trails of the world or of your own country, or <clears throat> it may be a bit of a mystery. It's, it's something that seems very familiar, but I think it's worth digging into a little bit. Um, we hear these names, the, the Camino de Santiago in Spain, the, the Appalachian Trail, the, the Mont Blanc circuits, um, you know, the Annapurna Trail. We, we hear some of these names, but what connects all of them and what connects them to any trail that we find anywhere in the world is that trails are firstly designed to be traveled uh, on foot and sometimes by bicycle and on horseback as well, but primarily on foot. And they're carefully designed to connect people and place. They pass through generally scenic areas or at least sparsely populated areas. Um, they're designed to be safe, to make sure that the person traveling through them is, is as, as removed from danger as is possible. And they're also designed for enjoyment, to bring the person who travels through them into contact, not just with that beautiful landscape, but also with the culture and, and the people who might be in the area around as well. And that they have varying lengths. Some are very long, some are much shorter, and that you can choose based on your uh, desire or ability. So that's a, a general overview of, of trails and, and forgive me if it seems too simplistic, but th there's, there's another level to it as well. These great trails of the world um, have something a little bit extra and to make a trail really stand out, you start to look at another set of factors. Firstly, that the, the trail is unpaved. It's, it's a natural surface, a natural terrain, and it's separated from roads. It takes you well away from the hustle and bustle of modernity and highways. It's environmentally sustainable. In the world that we live in today, it's of paramount importance that a trail should be designed in, in tandem with the landscape that it passes through. And the best way to do this, of course, is that trails use pre-existing pathways, exactly. um, footpaths uh, that have been there for hundreds or maybe many thousands of years. Maybe they were used as old trade routes or, or they were old pilgrimage trails or they were where the shepherds walked or they connected villages. Whatever the reason, they've been there for a very long time and a, a modern day trail reimagines, reimagines them in a new context. A great trail also um, is accessible to many different people. It's not just, this is one of the, the, the big misunderstandings of, of trails, I think, is that some people imagine they're just for people who are very comfortable in the outdoors, people who like to go for days or weeks on end in very remote locations and camp out and carry all of their food. That's absolutely not true. Great trails should cater to, to people of all abilities. They should have variations and stages so that if you want to go for one day or half a day or, uh, you can or if you want to go for five days and, and walk instead of 10 kilometers you want to walk 20 or 30 a day you can do that too um, and it gives you it has all of the services uh, in place accommodations guides resources to allow you to be able to choose exactly the sort of experience that sure. you want um, and importantly it also connects you with with the communities in a very deep way that you pass through along the way. So hopefully that explains a little bit more about uh, 
how, certainly how I see trails and, and as we work together to create trails, those are the things that we're looking for. And it, it's maybe also worth mentioning a little bit about why trails are so beneficial. And, and you can look at this in, in, in two different ways, I suppose. The first is to look at how trails benefit the, the local area, the area that they, they pass through and the, the people who help create them or are in that catchment zone. And the first very obvious reason and very important one is that trails create a huge economic opportunity and help encourage prosperity in that area. And they, they do this by creating opportunities and, and necessity for accommodation, uh, for those who are passing through, for restaurants, for the, the sales or rental of equipment, for the maintenance and management of the trail, through guides, through many other ways. And it's not, it's not just along this, uh, this small trail itself, um, it's through the whole corridor. It, it creates an opportunity in a much wider area from all the, the trailheads where people access it from the, the different areas that they might go off to. And it, it, it impacts an entire um, area, not just the trail itself. But the, the, the creation of a trail and the imagining of a trail also helps people to, it, it builds a, a sense of pride and a, an ownership in the area. Um, we all love the place that we live in, I'm sure, or the place that we come from. I'm from Northern Ireland and I, I speak about it constantly. I tell people it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. You and I, I know Dennis, Dennis loves Hunan and uh, constantly talks about it, um, even outside of a work environment. <laughs> but, but one thing that's wonderful is when someone else then visits that place that we feel so great about and they see that too. And then they tell us that and it helps us to see it through a new lens. So, so to have other travelers come in and, and, and see that place helps those who live there um, build up that pride and, and that sense of ownership and, and stewardship of that area too. And, and as I mentioned previously, that then helps for this trail to be a, a, a platform for, for protection environmentally and culturally of the area to help maintain it. Trail should certainly not be something that caused any damage or harm to the area. Uh, to the contrary, they should only build layer upon layer of benefits. Um, we can also look at, uh, also very obvious, I suppose, the, 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 the benefits to, to those who, who come to walk on trails. And um, for me, when I go to a new trail somewhere else, I, I, I have this wonderful um, prearranged, organized way to access and connect to the, the natural world and, and the communities that are there. It's, it's a way for me to get a very quick insight into that place and also a way to be outdoors, to, to be healthy, to stay physically fit and, and to, to, to learn as much as possible about a new place that perhaps I didn't know very much about before. So without dwelling on it too much, I, I, I think it's, it's important just to set up at the outset that there's a, a noticeable measurable increase in the quality of life for, for all of those who, who facilitate and those who use trails. And there's case studies of this that we could look at all around the world. We, we won't spend too much time on it um, today because that, that's uh, quite a, a, a lengthy discussion in itself, but I'll, I'll just briefly reference um, a couple of things. You, you notice I've, I've shown a few pictures here of some of the trail projects that I've observed and worked on. The first was the Trans-Caucasian Trail in Armenia, um, which is a wonderful project that I, I helped on, on briefly at the start of my career. And these last few pictures have been from a trail called the, the Zagros Trail, which is what I've been working on most recently. And in northern Iraq, which may seem like a very unusual destination for a trail, but uh, in fact, it's it's been one of the most wonderful projects. And it's built on the back of a number of other trails that have been growing up in the Middle East and our, our colleague and friend David Landis yep. who worked um, in China with us and will continue to uh, he's he's been one of the, the pioneers of those um, so I, I wanted to mention that and show that because it's a, it's a beautiful picture and, yes. um, and it's it's a, a, a trail that's that's going to be very successful and to show that trails can work even in the most unlikely places but also to to point out, you know, some of the, the, the better known trails. North America has some of the most famous in the world, the Pacific Crest Trail, um, which is a, a national institution by this point and has been used by hundreds of thousands of hikers each year. Uh, the Appalachian Trail, which is also, both of those trails are, are a few thousand kilometers long um, and 
thousands of people through hike them each year, but also you have many, many more who hike small sections, just choose a day or a week or, or whatever it is. In Western Europe, we have the Camino de Santiago, which was once a, an old pilgrimage trail and in the last two or three decades has been reimagined as a very popular um, tourist activity with hundreds of thousands, again, people going each year to walk across uh, northern Spain. In Australia, there's the, the Great Ocean Walk, which is uh, a relatively recent trail, only 15 or so years old. And it's just about 100 kilometers long, but has been highly successful, created jobs throughout the region, tens of thousands of local hikers, many more coming from other countries, um, at least pre-pandemic. Uh, and then you've got highly successful trails in um, Japan and South Korea, all across other parts of Asia. And, um, and of course, right here in, in the UK, this is one of the, the, the most beautiful places in the world to go walking. We've got dozens of world-class trails. I've, I've just noted a couple here. Um, the, the Pennine Way, which is, was the first national trail in England, takes you up through Northern England uh, towards the Scottish borders and, and the North Downs Way as well, down here in the south of England. Um, and what's interesting about these trails is that, and the others that I mentioned, is that if you, they all share the same factors. They're in very different landscapes, different cultures, thousands of miles away from each other. But if you have that same checklist of factors that make them recognized to, to an international expectation of standard, then you know that wherever you go in the world, you'll find a trail that people use and love, that's, wrote, that's rooted in local communities, that is safe, um, that has local people walking, foreigners walking, and that has been designed with systems in place to ensure that it's, it's viable and sustainable um, in, in an ongoing way. So a brief history of, of trails just to set us up, because I, I think it's, it's very important that we understand a little bit more what we're dealing with. But what we wanted to do was to take all of this and bring it to China. And that's how we ended up with this project. And so I'll, I'll let Dennis introduce to you uh, how we began with our very first project. In no the problem. Thank you, Leon. As you probably all could, you know, uh, see that, you know, your Leon is definitely a good storyteller, right? Because, you know, you. Uh, your, your, your explanation about trails and also particularly your experience really that enlightened me uh, so I think, you know, you, you mentioned actually, you know, about you, the introduction parts of actually of trails. You mentioned actually the benefits of the trails mm -hmm. and the definition of the trails as well. So I remembered uh, vividly uh, when we say, well, look, you know, Leon, we've met, since now we've met, now you really got my, you know, already itchy feet, even, you know, more itchy or itchier. <laughs> and then I was like, well, th there must be something that, you know, we could do. As you mentioned, you know, that uh, no matter where you're from, we're always proud uh, to show off actually what, what we've got actually to offer. So like you said, you know, you're from Northern Ireland and then you have actually, you know, a lot of hidden treasures and then actually from the place. And then I think, you know, the, the, the place actually I'm from, you know, China, particularly, you know, like I'm from Hunan province. There's a lot of things out there that, you know, we could develop. So now I think, you know, this is a time that, you know, after a lot of, you know, talk and the brainstorm meetings, we then develop the idea, why not we bring the expertise from the professional team that we built actually to China and then use actually Trails China actually to help actually mm -hmm. getting more trails or outdoor activities actually to help not only the global friends mm -hmm. or tourists but also from the local people as well as you just mentioned a really good trail not only can really to be the entertainment actually for the tourists but also your benefits you know their own regions and also, you know, for the local people as well. So then really that since 2018, then, you know, with the strong support of the um, Hunan Provincial Cultural Tourism Bureau and then the local municipal governments as well, then we started to identify the opportunity in Hunan. So now I would like to show you a few photos again, then you could see. So all the stories started from, you can see that uh, two smiley face, you know, there. Hopefully, that you know, compare with the first picture as you mentioned, there's not that much changes out there. Um, so then we start to think, well, what we could do. Then Leon and I, we started actually to go quite a lot of places, not only in Hunan but also in you know Sichuan and then and the other provinces as well. And then we want us really to bring, 
you know, the hidden treasure and bring some, you know, popular, uh, you know, products actually to, to be able to show, you know, to the global tourist market, but also even to the Chinese domestic markets as well. So then this is actually, you know, how we, I remember the picture when we took and then, you know, we, we actually have the local, you know, people in the background actually, you know, drinking. I think, you know, they've been having a lot of fun that day. And then I think that's the time we decided, well, look, you know, there's a lot of things actually we could do. And then from this, uh, you know, four pictures, really, that's actually all the, you know, tweeters that, you know, Leo, you posted and the journey that we experienced together. Mm -hmm. So as you could see that, you know, we went to, you know, um, Hunan Zhangjiajie. I think, you know, Zhangjiajie is not really unfamiliar to you all. And then I think that you were definitely impressed actually with the landscape and also the, the you know, the, the, the people there. And also from these pictures, you could see that, you know, you, we even went to Sichuan as well. And I remember in Sichuan, we went, we went to, we met the Chiang minority. Mm -hmm. And then that's they have really nice, you know, preserved, uh, you know, this kind of old buildings actually where the minority has been, it's really beautiful. And then you could see this as really the old lady over there. By that time that, you know, uh, she's already, you know, 109 years old and then she's living very happily. And I remember that she tried to communicate with us. And I remember the story, I mean, you and I would talk that we really need to bring the story, the beauty, you know, to the world as well. So after working with Leon, uh, you know, in different places, and then we start to think that, well, we need to really uh, get a product. And then this is, you know, the today, you know, we would like to share with you the very first uh, pro project that Trails China, you know, has actually in China. And then now I'm gonna hand over to you, Leon, and then let's share the story with everybody here about the trail. Yeah, sure, thank you. So the, the first thing we needed to do was to define a, an area that was manageable to work in. I mean, with any trail project, with any project in life, you need parameters um, to, to help guide you. And so within Hunan, we, we settled on this particular county based on the recommendations that you received and passed on. This is Shupu County. In, in Huaihua City. Yeah, and it, it was, um, it, it appealed to us because it, it allowed us to start with something that was um, not small, but of a manageable scale. Uh, we could create something that was that people could do uh, in a week or a, you know a week with a couple of weekends and and you know build it down to something smaller as well. So so this is where we settled on. Um, and the the first step was for us to see what was there to to scout as much as possible and establish what we were going to be working with. So we, we set up a, a base camp right in the center in this beautiful place to stay. And um, <clears throat> and then we we set off to, to explore all of the pre-existing paths that were already there. Um, this was together with David Landis, uh, our colleague. And, and so David and I, we took a month for this initial uh, phase of scouting. And, and the idea was just to, to see as much as we could travel hundreds and hundreds of kilometers um, and get a, a you know matrix of all these paths and then see how they might connect up together later on. And in order to do that, we we used a, a method to go a little bit faster than just walking. We, we traveled by mountain bike. And this is good in a, in a couple of ways. One is that, um, that it's a lot of fun and you can see I mean, it's some of the most exciting uh, mountain biking you know, I've done anywhere in the world. I mean, I, I think we just couldn't quite believe what we were seeing. It was, it was. So, this was one of our first days uh, from this picture. So it was it, it's wonderful for us, but it also, it allows us to cover more distance and, and also uh, we'd love this trail to be multi-use in the future. So it helped True. us to assess what the options were for, for biking too. So we'd, we'd just go for, for miles and miles instead of, um, you know, being able to just cover the distance you can on foot in a day, which is, let's say, if you're stopping to investigate maybe 20 kilometers or 12 miles, we could go 40 or 50 kilometers or, or 20 or 30 miles. Um, and and so we, we covered as much as we could through all of these wonderful um, landscapes. And, uh, and, and we ran into a fair number of, let's say, challenges and problems as well, because not all trails connect to each other. Some just run to one destination. Some are no longer used and run to a dead end. Some aren't quite what they appear on maps or from local advice. So, so often, and some are usable on foot, but not really by bike. Think, and, yeah. and that's what you, you find with these 
old stone steps. So not infrequently, we would end up having to haul our bikes up and over things that were very improbable. Sometimes we came across places that were really just not a good idea to be uh, traveling through in, in any method. Fortunately, we've done this a lot, so we're, we're very experienced at it. But this is all of utmost importance as well, because it's only by, by seeing absolutely everything with our own eyes that we can mark out what is absolutely safe that we can vouch for safety 100% True. and what has dangers apparent in it. And, and obviously river crossings that are, are susceptible to higher waters and floods, things like this. So we can um, identify them and then mark them on our, our maps yeah. um, to not be used. And, and, and so we collect all of this information yeah, digitally and, and put it together. True. And I, I definitely remember actually when this picture was taken and then you said, well, Dennis, you know, we encountered some, you know, not accessible, you know, places because in summer, this place will be, mm. you know, covered by water. So I remembered, you know, the conversation we've had that day particularly is that, as also you mentioned here for the trails that, you know, safety is always the key and the first priority actually because as you mentioned earlier, that the trails is not only going to be for, you know, um, professionals you know, like yourself and also can be people like me, probably most of the time sitting in the office, you know, but the things you know, in the meantime, you know, it's actually going to be workable for everyone actually with the top priority that safety is the key. Yeah. And then you have to think about different seasons, different types of weather, many factors as well. So, you know, how, how do we how do we gather all this information? Part of it is looking at maps and satellite information and and so on. But actually, one of the most useful methods, probably no surprise, is local knowledge. People who live in this area, of course, they know more than anyone else. And so we would uh, spend a lot of time gathering that information orally, talking to people, uh, asking them which paths do they use from their village to the next one, or, or which did their parents use what was it used for where did it go to um does it have historical significance when was the last time it was used uh what's it like in winter all of these questions um and and th this this takes a lot of time but it's also one of the most interesting parts putting together our local team here in the middle is tony who was our interpreter and, and traveled with us for most of this uh, journey and and helped us you know, try and slowly kind of unpick all of this information and then, and then put it all back together again. And, uh, and here's Dennis at work as well, trying to ascertain um, exactly where these trails go to. And, and so these, these dozens and dozens of hours of, of interviews and conversation um, start to help us build up this picture of what the trails are, what they were used for, where they go to, and what potential might be. And, and as we're doing all of this, we're we're thinking about the impact as well, right? That's that's the, the, the foundation of all of this is that we have to do a very clear impact assessment for, for everything that we're planning. And that's not just environmentally, that's a big part of it, but it's also culturally. We have to, we have to make sure that any development we do is, is responsible development and that the, the impact we have on, on the environment and culture is, is sustainable long-term. Yes. And, and what that means is that, um, we we speak to each of the, the, the villages that we go through and, and the people who live there to explain what this is to to help um understand from them how they feel about it uh and and then to to think about what it might mean to have increased numbers of people coming through and using these trails and, and how that might build as well which is also maybe a another useful moment to think about who uses trails exactly. and we've we've spoken about this or at least I have a little bit already. Um, but it's it's worth just repeating again that, that trails are not just for people who feel very comfortable and at home in the outdoors and spend a lot of their time there. To, to use trails, to be someone who walks on them, this is something that should be accessible to, to anyone, anyone who's seeking any part of outdoor recreation or wants a connection to nature or just wants to exercise and, and be healthy. Um, and we, we see this all, all over the world, that, that there's a huge diversity in, in trail users, not just people with a great deal of experience. And part of this is because there are fewer barriers to entry than some other outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need lots of highly technical equipment. You don't need a, a, a very diverse and well-developed skill set. Uh, you just need 
a pair of comfortable shoes and um and, and the ability to to balance yourself and, and you can go out and, and walk and you can you know you can start with something small and um many of the great trails in the world are are accessible by major cities because unsurprisingly so often the people who use these trails the most come from big cities they they want to get away from their their weeks which might be spent in offices and busy cities and get out and see some clear sky fresh air um green trees and and just have a different kind of experience whether that's for a day a weekend or a week um and 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 so this this is a full uh, full range of, of people who who come and do that. And, exactly, um, and also when we ask you know uh, speak about the build this trail, <clears throat> we always ask you know reminding you know ourselves that you know the trail of course actually because actually your expertise and also you know the the, the name actually you know for yourself and the team uh, that the trip on trail that we build and actually will get attention from the you know global uh, you know trails lovers you know with no doubt but in the meantime we also you know try to encourage the you know the chinese domestic you know that even the local villages you know mm -hmm. actually they walk on this as well actually for their own entertainment so um also you know we all know that in china the outdoor activities and also you know trails actually has been quite popular actually in china among those enthusiasts as well so then that's why you know for the trails is not only kind of like the global front but also for the domestic markets and even the local villages Right, and, and people can go to these trails with the confidence that that the trails are being designed and created by a professional team, so that so that when they go there, they they can expect a certain standard of experience, and that they will feel safe, and they will feel like they've got um, all the information they need to have the sort of experience they want, true. Uh, which is the most important part. So you know, back to back to the process of trail creation. Once we gather this information, we 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 traveled well over a, a thousand kilometers and and had this had our map of, of everything we we covered and then we started to, to piece those trails together and also to go a little bit deeper into the the what makes this trail unique what what is it that as a traveler you experience that is different from anywhere else and, and of course that's digging into the community and, and the culture and here it's very much defined by one particular community who are the the Huayao people, and this is a, a, one of the pictures in one of the villages. Um, and you know, the Huayao are, are really unique. It, there may only be around 10,000 within the community. And um, I'll, you know, I'll maybe pass over to Dennis to say a little bit more, because I think even for you from Hunan, this is a, uh, a new experience. And, and certainly for me from um, Northern Ireland, being able to have an insight into uh, the, the Waiyao and, and their traditions, cultures, heritage was just, just made everything else about the trail experience so much more meaningful. But I think it did for you too, Dennis, right? Definitely. You know, I think, you know, when you first introduced actually the trails ideas to me, you mentioned, you know, like you will be, safety is actually the key, but later actually another key word is actually culture rich. <clears throat> and then I definitely remember, you know, when we started to say, well, in, in Hunan province, you know, what, what actually we should do. And then, you know, as you know that, you know, in China, we have 55 minorities. And then to be honest, you know, before actually we even, you know, started this, when actually it was introduced, you know, in Xue Fong Mountain area, there's actually a Huayao minority. And I was like, what, Yao, what, what? And then it was actually, you know, you know, maybe actually just, even for me, it was a bit surprised actually to develop actually, you know, a deeper understanding actually what's actually what's out there. So I remember, you know, when we then, we started as a team, uh, I think that we had actually a really good desk research. And also, as you know, you all can see that from the previous pictures that we've been actually communicating with actually different villages and also the people, the, the Huayao minority people there, as you could see the really nice smell, you know, um, old, old lady over there. And when we talked to them, actually, she brought all the history actually of you know, her family and also, you know, the, the history actually of the, the whole village to us, which I think is very, very touching and astonishing even for, for me, you know, being Hunanese, let alone actually, you know, for you and David and actually the rest of the team. So I think, you know, that, you know, we are really practicing that, you know, the, the, the trail, a very successful trail that we are building is not like this kind of, you know, a trail that you need heavy kind of like machinery into, rebuild the road or actually you know to do the more construction work so what we do as you mentioned you know we're just trying to connect really the different village stories and then bring them 
really to the trail and to be able to share with everybody. So this is such, you know, our, you know, experience as you can see. This is another photo here. Uh, as you can see that, I think there's two ladies hats. I think that, you know, we actually had a good discussion that why are there many, you know, colors out there and also why, you know, the, the Huayao people are dressing like that. So now then I have a question then for you all then. So I, I don't know that how many of you guys actually can really answer the question that what is the history of Huayao? Why, how many colors are there actually in the hats actually for the Huayao people? And why they're dressing so colorfully? So this is something that, you know, I think is not only for you, uh, for, you know, as a representative actually of the global friends, but also for us actually to learn as well. So then uh, also, I think, you know, um, speaking of, you know, the, 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 one of the important parts actually for the culture is also the food culture as well. So uh, I think, you know, we're not getting to the lunchtime just yet, but I'm sure that, you know, everyone here, including you, Leon, you cannot deny that when you see this kind of, you know, a really nice, you know, kind of dish is presented in front of you that represents the culture that I remembered, you know, we were, uh, you know, all kind of shocked that, you know, how much, you know, as you know, um, how many choices out there mm. and also the people eat. So have any anything to say about the food? Well, it's nearly lunchtime here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. making me hungry, so okay. I think we, we should move on or I'll just dwell on it all, all the, no, it was one, I mean, the, the, the food, Hunan is already well known for its food, but, um, and, and food is important to, I think, almost all travelers, especially to travelers who are using their bodies and exercising and burning off more energy. Yeah. You, you, you're more hungry. And, and so to have all of this waiting for you at the end of the day or you know, a nice rest break in the middle is, is just perfection. It's true. And also, I think, you know, as we mentioned, you know, a part of actually when to get to the Xuefeng, you know, the, the Xuefeng Trail, that you, you get to know the, the minorities, you get to know the history, you get to know actually, you know, what's out there. But in the meantime, actually, you can, we, 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 we are given, you know, like a really often a window really for you to try the different, you know, kind of like cuisine, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, that's really, really, you know, kind of surprising. I think that, you know, you guys are able to handle. And the next picture, as you could see that, you know, uh, drinking, of course, is, is a way of, celebration uh, i think you know a lot of culture you know shares that and particularly you know when, when we were there I remembered you know there are a lot of actually experienced the hospitality actually from the Huayao, the minorities out there so uh, as you could see that this the picture i'm just wondering why leo you didn't put a, put a picture of yourself actually drinking so uh, so um <laughs> right now that the, the lady as you know uh actually is drinking enjoying this very moment it's actually, you know, uh, a, a journalist actually from South Morning Post, which we will we'll talk about that in later of this video. And then I remember, you know, she, that was also her ex first experience of the trail. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered after eating that really fun, you know, really the fantastic meal and the talking to the villagers. And then she had a really good time drinking as you probably all can see from the picture. So this is, you know, a very, very important part, you know, for the trail that we really want to get actually our, you know, hikers to enjoy every bit of the trail. That includes, you know, the culture there, the stories there, and also the landscape, the beautiful landscape. Uh, of course, you know, there's a condition that, you know, the trail is being built by professionals like, you know, our team, and then everything, you know, they do is, you know, kind of like is controllable and is safe. So now I will pass it over to you to talk about, you know, the next picture that, you know, shows the culture. Even yeah. Further. Yeah, and I think it's worth saying too that, um, you know, uh, traditions like this, heritage like this, it's so different to what we're used to, particularly for someone like me from, from this part of the world. And, and we have a responsibility as travelers, but also as, as storytellers and as trail designers to not to, to over exoticize any of, of this stuff or, or to make a, um, to, to, to try and create something that isn't there, but but rather to just document exactly what already exists and to help enshrine it in, in kind of cultural memory. And, and what we kept getting told is that, um, particularly with, with Huayao, so much of, of their cultural heritage hasn't been documented, hasn't been written down. Um, it only exists through oral traditions. And so to create a, a written documentation of it is a is, is another you know valuable function of this. It helps to it helps for this to to become um, more solid so that it won't get lost or, or forgotten um, and that's very important for us 
uh, as part of this work too. It's part of the, the sustainability drive as well. But I think just just ethically, that's that's the, the most important part of this for us. Um, and and you know, and to get to know the, the communities on a on a on a village level and an individual level, and to to help empower the people who live there to to make their own decisions to be part of this and and how they want to represent their culture through these these wonderful um, pictures that you've you've seen. Um, and uh, this is this is um, you know a gentleman who uh, who Dennis you, you I talked to too. Yeah, 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 Mr. Sure, Mr. Sure, yeah. Um, and he he had one of the, the few kind of written documents that we saw. This is the, the the history of the families in the village, and I know this made a big impact on you. But we spent you know quite a few hours with him, kind of going through the history as far back as we could remember and, and, and putting that in context of the wider trail and of the wider region. And, and so you know, coming from a, a storytelling and journalistic background, this is really exciting to me, but it just kind of reinforces to me that trails are a story, right? They're a exactly. story that you, you read with your feet rather than with your eyes, perhaps. But yeah, I definitely remember actually the whole morning we talked to Mr. Shu and then, you know, he was so lovely. Actually, he brought actually his family, you know, tree book actually to mm -hmm. show, you know, what's actually how this actually village was made and then, you know, and all these kind of stories. And remember that we, we, we talked to the scholars mm -hmm. uh, when we actually, you know, building this trail, you know, the, 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 the municipal government actually, you know, has introduced to us, you know, quite a few scholars and then, you know, talked us through what is happening there. And then, then we, we shared Mr. Shoes, you know, the, his families, you know, kind of stories. When we share with the scholars, it's also like a surprise for them as well that, oh, you know, that's that's a story that probably is not being really known just yet. Mm. So I think, you know, this, now we go back to again, that, you know, that the cultural reaches, the, the trail is not only to bring the, what's out there actually for like, you know, friends like yourself you know, from the globe, but also for the local people as well. So the trails is really community, we really help us, you know, different villages or different, as you know, communities such as commun yeah. to, to communicate with each other as well. Yeah, and and then you you notice how individual stories like Mr. Shu's are connected to the the broader stories of the the region or the country True. and the old trade routes, the 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 T horse trail that passed through parts of here and and you know brings you from a from a micro level right up to macro level and and that's an important part of it too. I mean we we also. Um, touch upon the, the the parts of of broader history that this trail brings us into contact with here the the, the most prevalent part of that was the history of Chu Yuan who's uh, you know I think one of the, the earliest and, and most well-known romantic poets in, exactly. in China yeah. um I of course didn't know a huge amount uh, about him um in my ignorance but it was a joy to learn and I hope it would be for people who experience the trail too and I as you walk on the the trail this is a place where he's said to have spent a lot of time um and uh you know this is this over 2000 years ago and so some of those trails are perhaps trails that he walked upon or which inspired some of his most famous pieces of writing um so, so we got an insight into that too so once we've you know gathered all of that together we, we try and put those puzzle pieces together in a way that, that tell a story that help um if you start at one end and go to the other end that help you walk through this narrative. Um, and then in order to, to support that, we create all of the resources you expect. And there's a, you know, there, there's a, a standard that, that's expected um, for all of the, the great world-class trails of the world, all of the, the resources that you would need. So we create all of the maps that show um, the overall routes and then the various stages within that um, and have the, the information on that that you need of the, the different services uh, accommodations and scenic spots and points of interest and so on um we also have the, the elevation profiles and other tools that will help you understand more about what it will be like to walk and one have a, a rating of um uh, the the level of challenge to expect whether easy or intermediate or difficult or so on and then other touches ways that you can mark your progress along the trail and, and help experience it uh, then very detailed guides to the um, cultural background of the region, what to expect, how to get there, all of the all of the things that you would find in a guidebook um, for a, a trail and, and guides to each day showing you that you can use in conjunction with the map that show you and explain to you where where to go and uh, and 
which which ways to take, what what to look out for, um, and what to enjoy along the way. And that, of course, has to be in in at least two languages in English and in Chinese. And and then in the in the uh, physical sense, that the final stage is to to put some physical markers along the trail, which we call way markers, to help guide people in a, in another way to show them that they're on the right path. Now these aren't these aren't meant to be used independently to show someone where the trail goes, but they're to be used in conjunction with the maps and with the guides as another resource. Uh, and, and so they're, they're just these small markers. Uh, again, you know, people have been on trails in other parts of the world recognize these. They're, they're used on most of the, the big trails in the world. Uh, and it just helps remind you that you're in the right place. But they're also designed in such a way that they shouldn't take away from the natural experience. They shouldn't be big and brash and, exactly. and removing you from the experience. Uh, so all of this is put together and, and we designed it in such a way that uh, we encourage people to hire local guides when they're there and they can, they can be guided along and have a deeper insight to the culture, but also that eventually um, a trail like this should be open independently for hikers to use these resources as well. So that's the story of, of the trail. Um, we finished it at the end of 2019 and um, put it together as this story that I, I hope uh, takes people through Shupo County and, and through the story of the Huayao and, and through a, a, a part of China that I really think is rarely seen. It's it's 100 kilometers, 60 miles, winds its way through these mountains and, and gives visitors a hopefully a unique window. And and it, it, in terms of, you know, how, how we make that appealing, I, I think a, a trail, as much as anything, has a brand as well. You find a, a, a brand that, that can tell that can say very concisely what it is that that trail will offer to someone if they choose to come and um, walk it that will be different to anywhere else in the world and, and that's what i hope is very unique about this one definitely um well, maybe one other final thing to say is that uh you know we, we we were able to access this trail because very recently um there was a uh, in 2014 i think I, there was a high-speed rail network that came through here um, and came into the, the sort of southern part of the trail and allows access to the trailhead where the trail begins. And, and prior to that, this this area was really closed off. Um, it would have taken five hours or so to get to Changsha, to, to the regional capital, and, and now it takes, you know, an hour and a half, something like that, by train. And so it, it opened up uh, all of the access to, to this valley and um, uh, not just for the trail, of course, but for, for many other things too. But that's really what allowed us to be there. And I definitely remember that, you know, for this, you know, the, the, the three keywords actually you mentioned actually what a really good trail really should bring or should actually, you know, what actually makes a good trail. You know, we talked about safety. We talked about, you know, the really cultural, you know, rich kind of like sectors. But also, you know, the, 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 the trails actually really should help actually with the local economy as well. As you just mentioned, you know, I remember that how surprised you guys were, you know, when the high speed train actually, you know, get to Shupu and then it really opens a lot of actually doors for the trails actually to be connected with a lot of, you know, spots that we think really worth developing. And I always remember that, you know, um, you mentioned that, you know, if without this, you know, the, the, the high speed railway station that, you know, there are a lot of spots that we probably won't be even able to really try to connect. Mm -hmm. So you could see that, you know, that this actually has been really helped us with the local, you know, kind of economy, you know, uh, as well. So, and I was, I was told that potentially there could be a cable car directly built actually from the Shupu station to the Huxing Mountain. Yep. So Huxing Mountain is actually one of the, you know, uh, where we started, you know, in one of the, in, in the trails that we built. And then to be honest, imagine if that is done, that how many people could really go there, enjoy the view, and they enjoy the culture mm -hmm. and also how many, you know, different places and shops, everything could be, you know, helped with. And I think what's interesting to us because the, the types of trails and experiences that we develop are, are designed to be sort of symbiotic with the, the natural landscape. Um, we don't engage in, in, you know, big development in construction or in, in clearance um, of, of land to, to create the trails. It's very natural, but it also needs a, a way to to be accessed otherwise it just 
takes an impossibly long amount of time to get there. So that's why part of the reason why from the outset this area was appealing because it already had the development in place to bring people in. And what we heard quite often was that um, it, it had changed everything. You know, before it took days for people to reach hospitals when someone was unwell in some of the villages that we were working in. And now it's, it's much quicker and safer, but yet it hasn't impacted uh, too much on the on the, the the rural and traditional lives that we find. So that's kind of what appealed to us. It, it fitted in with what we were looking for. And, and so now probably a very obvious point to make is you, you might be wondering what's happening with the trail now and where are we at at this point in time. This is a, another wonderful um, contributor to the trail, Mrs. Shu, same family name as the gentleman we, we, we saw earlier. Uh, she um, is managing one of the, the local uh, homestays that, that would have been involved. Um, now the trail, we, we, we finished the trail at the end of 2019 and, and did a, you know, quite a bit of, of press and, and, and pushing the trail to be launched then. And then of course, well, the world went the way that it did and everything closed down with the pandemic. And so the trail did open briefly. I mean, there was, there was some people who walked it just before the onset of the pandemic, but after that, of course, everything closed down and it is, it's still closed. It's, it hasn't yet been reopened. And so we, we hope that it will. I mean, Dennis can maybe talk about that a little bit more. Um, but from, from my point of view, I, I, I hope it reopens as soon as possible. That's our, our desire. Of course, it'll take a little bit longer for it to be open to international visitors. But as we hopefully made abundantly clear, it, one of the most important parts of this is that it's also available for those within China to go and walk. So I, I think we're very hopeful that um, it will be, there's quite a lot of maintenance we'll have to go on to bring it back up to the, the standard expected, but um, you know, really, really hope that for Mrs. Shu and the, the others involved and for all of us and for all of you, that this trail will be ready to be used uh, at some point soon. Definitely, you know, I think, you know, as you could probably, you know, uh, see from actually, you know, this picture and also I just, just mentioned, uh, I think, you know, we, we actually have a very strong hope and also we definitely believe that, you know, when we all can travel, you know, freely again, I think this trail, uh, after, you know, the conversation with the local management team, uh, we will make sure that, you know, it's all kind of like, you know, kind of safe and okay actually for everybody to enjoy, you know, the basically what actually the teams work. So I think, you know, uh, for now, I think, you know, we've went through, we've actually gone through that, you know, the definition of the trails and also, you know, our experiences. So I think, you know, I'd like to actually to go back again about the three keywords actually for, you know, the trail that we, we've done. So it's actually a self, it's a safe, you know, kind of like a trail for everybody, you know, um, to enjoy. And also the trail that we build actually will really enable you to see, you know, the very rich, cultural kind of like, you know, heritage, you know, and also stories there. And also, if you think of the on that, I would just say that how many bottles of waters you bought, you purchased actually from the local shops. And then I would think, you know, we, we would really have a really strong, you know, aim actually to help and sort of to help actually you know, the, the rural places with that the economy as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I, I just can't wait until it's, it's operational again. I mean, that's what we're, we're all waiting for. It's been a very, challenging time in the world for everyone and and uh and I, I just hope that it's it's coming to to a close that time and, and we're, we're able to look forward to the future yeah. um, and that we're able to to do this elsewhere too because i you know of course i i, I want to to talk about this trail in particular and the the wonderful experiences we had and i hope the rest of you will be able to have on it at some point soon too but i i also just really believe in the power of trails and, and that the that trails creates um, so much and are, are, are wonderful for, for everyone. So I, that's, that's kind of why I, any opportunity I get, I, I love to be able to talk about it. So just to, just to finish up, I mean, I, I, um, I thought we'd, uh, we'd maybe show a, a short uh, video? video from, yeah. from the, uh, Shufang Trail. Yeah. And give a little bit more of an experience of what's in wait if you're, if you decide to go and walk it when it, when it reopens. Definitely. I think, you know, like right now, I would like us, you know, to show you a video uh, that was actually, you know, was taken by the South Morning Post, and then the journalist is called Tessa. Yeah, who Tessa actually Chan, showed was, Yeah, was. Tessa Chen, and then the picture that you've you've already seen that you know she got you know the uh, you know 
all the Huayao people actually want her to, you know, to drink. So I think, you know, a really good video now we'll show with you to wrap up actually what we want to talk about. So um, ladies and gentlemen, I would stop sharing my screen now and then I will share um, the video. Hope you all enjoy it. Okay, please bear with me. Okay. Here we go. Please enjoy. Our goal with this trail has been to create a hundred kilometers of world-class hiking trail that offers a window into an unseen part of China. What we found in the Western market about the China tourism is all about you know those big cities, you know, Xi'an, Beijing, um, Shanghai, those places you know, people are familiar with. But we find actually there's a huge gap to bring the real China to the Western audience. So we just want to find those rural places that people never heard about. One of the things that's expected is that there are multiple ways in which a hiker can navigate along the path. So they have digital data, they have paper maps, they have descriptions of the day stages and, and there will also be way markings along the trail which is just strips of paint that um, help someone uh, orientate themselves in the right direction. So part of our work here has been to train a local crew to manage and maintain the trail moving forward but also to way mark the whole thing. We've been to a lot of places that, that even the local people they don't even know because those passes has been abandoned for ages if somebody really know where we've been to, probably the cows or, or, or the chicken. What I find really exciting about this is just trying to, to bottle that experience that I found eight years ago across 5,000 kilometers of walking in China and condense it down into 100 kilometers and something that people can do in a, a week off work. David and I have been here four times this year and for each phase of our process of creating this trail we just cover hundreds of kilometers and often we'll just arrive at the range and people will just look at us like we're from a different planet and they're always completely friendly and we're often invited in and given snacks and given directions but we are always an oddity and in a, a large number of the villages and farms that we've passed through we are the first if not um, one of the first uh, foreigners ever to come through. Pihotala. Boy, you know, you should have a pumpy, you should have a pumpy. 
，因为叶老师有时大家嘴不求，求小米后边吹上热，没关系。你热也不用上了，因为这个比小米也大嘴不求上了，但是我不信。他们是不因为原来的种的那个地方也有，也有好处呀。年轻人那有你，他也是个好的苦力相互的呀。我不在种的，就是比在外面的会呀，强一些了，方便一些的，嗯。在外面你打好，哪一哪一家相好啊？Great. Yeah, I think, you know, um, that's, you know, uh, where we are and, you know, about us, you know, the trail. I hope actually with this presentation, uh, we were able to bring uh, our story, uh, a friendship, a partnership and, a go and a, of course, you know, like a, an ongoing trail building uh, mindset. And also, uh, I think, you know, it's also our kind of like we determine actually to build more, you know, trails actually in China. That we can get more people, including all of you guys, actually to see the beauty of wider China. And then again, um, I'd like to say thank you uh, for the cultural office of the embassy and the CNTO China uh, in London again. That you know give us this opportunity to show off what we've done. So I think you know um, according to the schedule, I think this is the question and answer you know section. So if you have um, have any question to us and that you have anything that you want to learn about this you know trail please do ask questions and uh, trust us the little presentation cannot really cover all our feelings and our, our stories so please do feel free to ask a question and then when you ask a question directly to our moderator and then they will pass it over to us and then we'll answer the question If there's any question, please feel free. And so then, do people, how do people ask? Do they write them in the chat box or do they send them to? Yeah, so the question would be, so I think, you know, our moderator maybe could, um, you know, unmute Kevin. Kevin Sway has a question. So um, please uh, unmute Kevin. So we can actually have a question and answer section as well. Hi guys. Hi. Hi, Kevin. Thank you to Miss Sue for your invitation, and uh, really nice to see Dennis again and uh, Leo for the first time. Actually, I'm a, I'm a keen walker myself. Good. And only recently, on a, one of the hottest days, after four days of fasting, I managed five miles in Surrey. <laughs> uh, when I say fasting, I mean that you know, four days without any food, just water. And it's the same during the trial. Uh, yeah, uh, because I, I do walk here and we can see in this country, we have public path signs everywhere. We have large scale AA maps. Uh, what do you see as challenges in China in a country without a history of hiking? I know it might be difficult for you to get high scale, uh, large scale maps in the first place. Yeah, I th well, Firstly, well done on your walk um, Thank you. to meet fellow enthusiasts. Um, I think there, there's not a history of, of pathways like this um, in China, but there is a history of walking. I mean, people have been walking for thousands of years in China. So, so the, it, it's, it's not been, been imagined in a kind of recreational context like this, um, but because the, there is that history, that, that's something to build upon. Um, in terms of how it works functionally, our idea is that we 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 start to create them in these you know managed uh, bubbles, so to speak, so that everything can be uh, everything. So we we know all of the elements at play because it, um, we don't want to. Of course, we want to encourage people to go off and explore and have adventures. But there's also if you go off where there's where there's no maps and you don't know where you're going, there's all sorts of other things that can go wrong. So for us, you know, the the we see our, our focus very much as, as working on, you know, one trail at a time, starting small and then trying to expand them bigger and connecting them up to create, you know, my dream would be to create a much larger network that starts to expand between provinces and eventually all the way across the country. But yes, we don't have we don't have the type of uh 
the, the same history of recreational hiking and public footpaths and uh, and maps that we have here. So we've got to you know start with some of those things from scratch. But it, it can be done, and it also opens up more opportunities that way as well because there's there's uh, you know an open book in some ways. Yeah, I know it's uh, hiking is not extreme outdoor. It's not anything like a triathlon, but I will have to admit uh, hiking is not for everyone. And uh, also because of this, uh, my question is for international tourists, how can you design more manageable bite-sized trials so that they can accommodate these short trips in their busy, you know, five-day, 10-day itinerary in China? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was something we had in mind. This was that 100 kilometers is really nice distance, 60 miles, it, it means that we've, we've designed this on a, uh, that it can be done in five to eight days for the, for the overall distance. And then obviously if you want to do a shorter distance, it'll take less time, but five to eight days is really nice because if someone in theory, you know, in a non pandemic time could come from another country with one week off work and the, the weekend either side, come settle in, go walking and then head back. And so that's, that's kind of the, the, the scale of trail experience that I think works really well. If you start to create something that's 500 or a thousand miles long, yes, it's, it's more ambitious, but it also means that far fewer people will ever do that full distance. So, um, you know, this, within this 60 mile trail, there's also a really nice, uh, 20 mile option and a 30 mile option. And, um, I think that's something that I hope would encourage people to, to make the journey, whether it's from somewhere far away, like the UK or from, from, closer regional neighbors as well yeah yeah brilliant I, i've been to so many meetings with uh Denise and i'm here so sorry i forgot to introduce myself i'm running a china world program on sky uh, unfortunately at the moment this is only english language in the uk on tally about china we do four hours a day about history culture food travel uh you mentioned even for this um uh, 5,000 miles uh, Mongolia to Hong Kong trip, you missed so much. Yeah. Do you want to go back again? Oh, of course. Maybe we can create, uh, make a documentary out of it. I would, I would love to go back again. I, would, I mean, there's, um, you know, in, in some ways it was, it was the experience of a lifetime and I'll, I'll always be grateful I did it and I'll never forget it. But in other ways, it's, it was like walking down a, down a corridor and opening doors and looking mm. into a room full of the most amazing things and then mm. having to close the door before I could really explore and then going further down and opening another door because it's just such a, a vast area and mm. there's so much to see and so you know if I if, if we'd spent time exploring and enjoying everything that interested us we'd still be there you know nine years later we'd still be mm. on the journey so I'd 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 love to do something like it again, but I'd, I'd love to be able to manage it in such a way that we spent you know, more time in each place. And that's kind of what we, why we came to this conclusion was let's just create one experience in one exactly. place that really delves in. I think, you know, uh, you know, cause Kevin actually has a, you know, uh, sort of like a background of actually do documentary and everything. Mm -hmm. I think you definitely, you know, the next time what we are thinking is, you know, um, we want to get our experience. Sometimes it's not only the, the result or actually the actual products to be really shared with us, you know, that the, 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 actually the market. I think the stories that, you know, that we've been really, you know, communicating with the local villages, learning the history of that certain place should be also, you know, recorded as well. Because I think that this really tells us that, you know, we're all living the same planet and that there's a lot of, you know, different story, different angles actually for us actually to, to learn from. Mm -hmm. So I think this is definitely, you know, interests us. And then, uh, like you, you know, uh, Kevin, that you you mentioned, you only walked five kilometers, you know, uh, an hour on that. I think that you, you've been modest. So what, what we can do is really next time when we can all travel again for the next journey, we have to bring you or mm -hmm. all the friends here, you know, to, to, to walk with us. And then you will be really, you know, enjoying the, 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 the safe trail that can really help you to understand the local culture. But to us, Particularly, we want to actually help with the local communities and economy as well. So you're going to enjoy it, Kevin. Brilliant. All the best. <laughs> I really look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so 
You yeah, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, uh, more questions, you can ask, you know, tell our moderator and then, you know, they will, you know, message us. And then, of course, if you have uh, questions that you want to know particularly that, you know, you can actually always <laughs> email us or, you know, talk to us later. So, um, OK, so we see. Shanghai uh, interesting. OK. OK, okay. okay. yeah, sure. Should so I, I think you know, yeah, we can, we can, you can, uh, can share the question from uh, Chris Torin. Yeah, hi, Chris. Um, so yeah, your question is that you're, uh, you're a perfect question. You're interested to know whether it's possible to actually do the trail now. Um, you'd love to, uh, you'd love to get some detailed information and um, and find out how to do it. I, I, I hear you loud and clear. I mean, um, it's it's. Uh, it's one of the the greatest frustrations I think in in my professional career to have worked on a, a trail that I'm so excited about, and then to have it, um, you know, immediately kind of have to be closed down. And the reason we create these trails is so that people can use them. So we're we're you know desperately disappointed that it's not been possible to do it because of the pandemic. Um, it's it's not possible to walk on the trail at the moment. It hasn't yet reopened. Uh, so a couple of things on that. One is that there's a, a local team who manage it yes. um, in Shifang Martin. Dennis can maybe say more on them as well. Let well, me say that. Yep. Um, and they control all of the resources. We handed handed over all of the resources and material that allow the the trail to be accessible. Um, and in, but in order for for those resources to be made public or given to people, the the local trail have to make sure the trail is at the standard required in terms of safety, in terms of access and everything else. It has to be um, maintained, cleared, and make sure that all of the services that were in place when we designed and opened the trail are still in place. And I um, I believe that the local team are, are yes. planning to do that as, as soon as possible. But un until that's done, uh, the trail isn't accessible for the obvious reasons of safety. Yes. Um, when it is, all that information should be made available via a central resource hub that's always the plan yes so that everything is accessible to everyone so so yeah Dennis maybe you can give an idea of uh, an idea to Chris and, and others like him of, of when this yeah this might I think be. you know uh, at the moment you know we got actually you know quite a few messages and uh, questions and also because he's getting to the you know kind of a, you know mm -hmm. the, the time actually we're gonna you know uh, you know finish actually this mm -hmm. however I would like to you know summarize what Leon said uh, Leon is absolutely right and by the way thanks for the question Chris and the team as well I think, Tina, your question is, you know, uh, some friends are interested in how to get these kind of routes or resources uh, if you would like to try in China. I think, you know, I would like to really summarize this, you know, together. So first of all, to echo from you, um, you know, Leon is absolutely right. Uh, every time we finish building a trail or design a trail, there will be a professional trend local management team who will look after all the resources and to ensure that the you know, that the trail is ready to go. And we did mention the three key words for the trail. Safety is actually the first priority for us when we design the trail. So when you when you walk in the trail that you're not gonna be feeling well, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere, you always easy access for you to connect to village A to village B. But in the meantime, because of the obvious reasons that, you know, the, the trail actually, you know, needs a bit of more maintenance at this very stage. So when this is ready, as Leon mentioned, Charles China will also, you know, be the hub as to ensure that everything's ready. There will be what we said, the digital maps, and also there will be contact details from the local management team for you to access and actually to experience the trail. Now, Tina, uh, I know that, you know, in China, uh, as you could see that already that, you know, you, you want actually how to get this kind of routes or resource in China. When you are in China, just like Chris now, I know that you're in Shanghai, you will see a lot of, you know, kind of like, I, 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 I've been using this, you know, um, uh, the words a lot like uh, hidden treasures. So, but the thing is, you know, when you do that, uh, I would just say that if there's no real kind of guidance or actual like a map or trails kind of like out there, I, I wouldn't suggest you just to go to this kind of wonderland all by yourself because, you know, for obvious reason, you know, safety. So I think, you know, Tina, in that case, if I may, I would like you to keep, you know, we will keep you informed when we actually have, you know, more trails to build. And then we, we are, it is our sort of destiny, you know, for Trails China to bring able, to be able actually to bring more products, you know, to friends like yourself. Yeah. And I, I think just on a, on a practical note, also one thing to say is that we, we obviously promoted the trail very heavily when, when it was 
finished with the idea that people could go off and do it immediately. And, and then because of the pandemic, it wasn't possible. So we stopped doing that. And, and one of the reasons we're, we're beginning to talk about it again is that we have, it's been indicated to us and we really believe that, that uh, the trail will open up again soon for people to go and use. So that's partly why you're kind of hearing about it now for the first time. So we don't, exactly. so for, for Chris and for Tina and, and for any others uh, wondering, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that you can't go and do it right now, but uh Hopefully, very soon, that will be possible. And that's kind of why we're here reopening this discussion about it. Yeah. And also, I think, you know, the question is perfectly, you know, answered already. Actually, there's a, there's a friend called Chun Ju. Uh, you know, 非常感谢你们在分享, 非常喜欢, so basically, this is exactly, you know, that you've already answered it, that, that, that this kind of the reason that we are presenting this at this very moment because we have a strong belief that you know in China at the moment uh you know there are you know some regions actually available actually for people really to experience you know the, the tourist you know kind of projects and the products and then uh the, the question is also how can you find actually more uh, you know trails products you know in, in China so in this case you know I would just say you know if you type actually the keywords you will find Hiking is hiking. The trails is not really like a you know unfamiliar you know words actually for the market. It's been really popular, particularly after the pandemic. Everyone wants actually have a bit really enjoy the breeze you know outdoors. So I'm sure that you will you won't you won't take you will take you probably a second to find a lot more. So um, okay, thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, we got you know uh, the uh, message from Chris again. Thanks, Leon and Dennis. Much appreciated. And then yeah, thank you very much. I think you know we are getting really the, the lunch time after seeing the picture i'm really getting hungry i bet you guys will do the same so i would like to say thank you again on behalf of myself leon and the whole team uh, for everyone participating and then i'm gonna hand over to mr xue uh to you know uh, host yeah. the meeting thank, thank you, you. All from me as well. thank, thank you all. thank you it seems too short for such a brilliant talk thank you for your i mean wonderful stories um I already feel like going through a very, you know, exciting journey with your talk. I can't wait to try it with my own feet. Thank you very much, Leo and Dennis. Um, okay, tomorrow will be the last day of 2021. That's this year, uh, China Weeks, when culture and tourism blend in the UK. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Yupo, Minister Councillor from the Cultural Section of the Chinese Embassy in the UK to say a few words. Well, thank you, Leon and Dennis. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you at the webinar today. To me, uh, Leon's journey is indeed a L-E-O-N journey. L for learn. E for empower, O for oxygen, and N for noble. It's a noble journey for a noble cause of keeping caring for all through learning from all. A noble cause which demonstrates peaceful cooperation open and inclusive, mutual learning, mutual benefit and win-win, which are the true spirit of the ancient Silk Road. And mutual learning is one of the themes of this two month China week. For example, a food talk organized by the China, uh, Cambridge China Center gave detailed stories of how many ingredients of Chinese cuisine were actually from other lands to begin with. Another example, out of 10 concerts organized by China UK Music Festival, we saw many cases equaling the themes too. Chinese guitarist Young was joined by British tenor Ian Bosridge to present the six Chinese songs 
they were ancient Chinese poems translated into English by Arthur Willey, the well-known, respected sinologist and the interpreter, uh, you know, translator in this country. And then it was later musically composed by Benjamin Britten. Perfect example of cultural exchange and mutual learning and beneficial. And caring is another theme. In 2020, China achieved a goal of eradicating absolute poverty and building a moderately prosperous society in all aspects. Tourism and cultural sectors actually played an important role in eliminating poverty, creating jobs, promoting local economies, and improving people's life. We saw a, a rich variety of programs focusing on the stories of how intangible cultural heritage support the development of the rural area and how favorable policies for the development of tourism contribute to the preparation for the Beijing Olympic Winter Games. Yesterday, Cooking Along, Cook Along, an online class featuring a Hunan local delicacy was presented to provide a simple way of making Chinese cuisine with easy to get ingredients at home here during the lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, the day after tomorrow is the 100 year old birthday of the Communist Party of China. For the last 100 years, the CCP has kept learning to empower China and the Chinese people. At 2021 China Weeks are closing its themes of mutual learning and cooperation between China and the UK towards a global care for a shared future for mankind shall be pursued. And it is therefore fitting and proper that Leon's talk with Dennis today as one of the shining climax of the China Weeks will be long remembered. Thank you, Leon and Dennis. Thank you all. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yupen, for your remarks. Now, it's really lunch time. To conclude, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Leo and Dennis again for sharing your extraordinary stories with us and for MIC team's strong support. My thanks also go to our distinguished guests, media friends and audience for joining us today and for your wonderful questions. And finally, thank you, my colleagues from both CNTO London and the Cultural Office of the Chinese Embassy. Now, for those who missed today's talk, uh, it's okay. The talk today is recorded and will be subtitled in English and Chinese soon to be watched on our links at social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and WeChat. So stay tuned and have a nice day. Have a nice day, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.